Hello and welcome to another episode of Mean Brews. Today I'm covering oatmeal stout. So you can make your stouts for this winter. Let's get right into the data. I've got 28 winning stout recipes, 13 gold, um, 3 silver, 3 bronze, and 9 award winning. No best of shows this time. Uh, BJ, BJCP style is 16B, a very dark, full-bodied, roasty, malty ale with a complimentary oatmeal flavor. Uh, when I look at the evolution, there's actually quite a bit of evolution from the early or mid-90s uh, to today, um, but not a lot of variability between recipes. Quite a conundrum here, this style. Uh, original gravity ranged between 1.046 and 1.080, with the average at 1.060. Um, my recipe will be 1.062, and the reason is we're seeing an increase in time. So my data set goes all the way back to 1994, and we are seeing a correlation for an increase in original gravity for this style of award-winning examples of this style with a Pearson's co correlation coefficient of 0.646. So pretty good cluster, pretty good uh, trend going upward here. For IBUs, uh, anywhere between 23 and 44, with the mean right on the mid-range uh, for BJCP at 32. Um, I'm going to be right at 33 with my example. Um, we are seeing a decrease in the bittering units over gravity units uh, versus time. This correlates with the increase in gravity, but not an increase in the bittering uh, or the IBUs over time. Uh, so we are, we are seeing a decrease, which is, you know... The inverse of the Lupulin uh, threshold shift, a decrease in the bittering units over the gravity units over time. Uh, for the color for this style in SRM, um, the range was between 26 and 46, quite a big range. The average was right at 36 in the upper end of the BJCP uh, range. Mine's going to be pretty dark. Um, I'm following the, the guidance on the roast malts, and that puts it on the dark end of the spectrum. Uh, for the percentage of malt types for this style, um, the average for all recipes was 66% base malt, 7.5% uh, crystal, 2% toast, 11% roast, and 13% adjunct. Um, we are seeing a change in time for the crystal percentage of crystal. The blue curve here is the percentage of crystal over time <clears throat> from 94 to today. It's decreasing from somewhere around 8 to 10 to somewhere between 4 and 6, while the toasted malts are increasing from nothing uh, to around 2 to 4%. Pretty good correlation here as well. Um, for looking at just the recipes that use that malt, um, focusing here on the base malts, again, 100% of the recipes used base malt on an average of 68, and that range was somewhere between 40% to 85%. Zooming in, on, oh, I'm going to be right at the uh, right at the mean here with my uh, example recipe. Zooming in on the specialty malts, and we'll start with the the, the adjuncts first. 100% of the recipes used an adjunct, um, somewhere between 2% and 40% of an adjunct, um, and um, right at probably around 12% of the grist was the average. Um, the blue curve is roast malts. Of course, it's a stout. So anywhere between 5 and 25% of the grist was a roast malt with an average of around 12. Um, not every recipe, one few or uh, only one recipe didn't use a crystal malt. Um, somewhere between 2 and 17% of the grist with an average of around 7. And then fewer, much fewer, more than a third, uh, but less than half used a toasted malt. Um, but we are seeing an increase over time, remember that, um, between 2 and maybe 8% at an average of around 5% of the grist. I am going to use right at the average on the adjuncts. That's mainly oatmeal, flaked oatmeal. A um, little bit less than the average on the roast, a uh, little bit less than, than average on the crystal, following that trend, and a little bit less than the average on the toast as well. Um, for the base malts that were used for this style, the most prominent is a British Pale Malt, which is Maris Otter or Golden Promise. 100% of the recipes used Maris Otter or Golden Promise at an average of 67.4% of the grist. Uh, others that were used, Wheat, Munich, or Mild Malt. One recipe used um, Mild Malt. 
not prominent enough to, to really focus and, and put in your recipes. Oop. Yeah, and I'm going to be right there at 65, 66% of the grist to follow the overall trend. Crystal malts, most prominent is a medium, crisp, medium crystal. 54% of the recipes used a medium crystal on an average of 5.5% of the grist. 46% um, used a dark crystal on an average of 4.9% of the grist. And then we have a light crystal, which is the red curve. Um, Carapils is a green curve, and then golden naked oats in one recipe. Um, right here between 4 and 8% seems to be the sweet spot for um, these crystal malts. And a mix of crystals was pretty common. I mean, if you go back, if you go back a slide, um, crystal was at, um, let's see, at about, you know, 8 to 10%. So they are mixing their crystals um, to get complexity in this style. Um, I plan to, to use both the medium and the dark crystal a mix on the lower end so I get that 8% in the recipe that I'm looking for. Toast malts, uh, biscuit or victory was the most prominent with a um, little over a quarter of the recipes. Let's see, 29% of the recipes using that at an average of 5.5% of the grist. We also had a honey malt, melanoidin, and special roast used in one recipe each. All of them right around the 5% uh, mark. Um, anywhere between 1 and, and 9 were, were uh, the ranges here for this toasted malt. I plan to use 4% just because I couldn't uh, squeeze in more than 100% of the malts to get uh, this to come up higher. Roasted malts most prominent is a chocolate malt. 89% um, of the recipes used a chocolate malt at an average of 5.2% of the grist. Next was roasted barley. 79% of the recipes used a roasted barley at an average of 5.7% of the grist. Uh, black malt, 46% of the recipes used a black malt or black patent malt at an average of 3.2% of the grist. And then we had one recipe that used a brown malt and two recipes that used roasted wheat. Um, I do plan to use um, chocolate malts just under the curve here. I'm going to mix all three um, just to get some complexity. Uh, right around 4%, I think, of the chocolate malt. A little bit less of the roasted barley and even less of the black patent. You'll see why I picked those numbers here. Um, what we're seeing with the black patent is a trend down over time and with chocolate malt, a trend up over time. Um, so I'm kind of following those trends um, more so to in my proportions between them than in their overall proportion of the grain bill. Um, for adjuncts, 100% of the recipes use a flaked oat or toasted flaked oats or something like that at, uh, um, oh, it says sucrose, that's not right, 10% uh, of the grist, 10.6% of the grist, that's flaked oats. Um, and then there were other ones that were used, most prominent was flaked barley, about a quarter of the recipes used a flaked barley or a lactose. Um, one recipe used a flaked wheat. Um, one recipe used about 32% Oreo cookies by weight. And another recipe used brewer's licorice. They said they all won in um, in the oatmeal stout category, so I included them in this data set. I will be using uh, flaked oats at a little bit higher than the average, uh, right around 13%, I think. Bittering hops, most prominent is EKG, followed by Fuggles, Northern Brewer, and a bunch of others. A total of 11 different bittering hops were used by these recipes, and I plan to use EKG for my recipe. Um, the prominence of EKG has just really boomed in the past, uh, really the past decade. Um, so, uh, again, we're, uh, it really, really shows the strength of using that as a bittering hop. Flavor hops, five different flavor hops were used. EKG and Fuggles, the most prominent, more than, you know, three quarters of the re recipes used. That used a flavor hop, used one of those English varieties. I plan to use EKG. Uh, aroma hops, six aroma hops were used, and Fuggles, Willamette, EKG, the most prominent. Uh, I do not plan to use aroma hop for this recipe, and the reason I'll show you in a second. Um, so 39% of the recipes used a flavor hop, and 39% used an aroma hop. They were almost on top of one another at 0.15 ounce per gallon, or that's not right here, uh, or 0.16 ounce per gallon for aroma. Uh, right around 1 to 1.1 grams per liter in uh, metric units. 
um, big range here for the aroma hops so um, I will be right on the mean for the flavor hops I'm not going to use an aroma hop like I said and the reason I'm not going to use an aroma hop is um, over time we're seeing a trend not only down the blue curve is the percentage of recipes that use an aroma hop per year and the orange curve is the amount of aroma hops they used in ounces per gallon. Both of these are trending to nothing. So I think this is showing that the, this is really not a benefit to the style to add a, you know, something less than 10 minute hop addition to this uh, beer. Mash types, I think all but one used, or two, used a single infusion mash, um, two did a step mash. Um, I plan to do a single infusion. Uh, for the mash rest, we had a protein single recipe used a protein rest, single recipe used a beta rest. Um, I'll just focus on the alpha because I think those are unimportant. Um, alpha rest average was at 154 Fahrenheit for an average of 69 minutes, um, 68 Celsius of imperial or metric units. Uh, I plan to be right on the mean for my recipe. Boil duration was anywhere between 60 and 90 with an average of 74. I'm going to use 75 um, for the yeast use. This surprised me. I thought the Guinness would be the most prominent, but um, Fuller's seems to be the most prominent with 25% of the recipes using Fuller's, 21% Guinness, and 14% Worthington. Um, those were the big hitters here for this style. We also had some other English, American, uh, and American style uh, strains used. A total of 10 different yeast strains used. And I plan to use the Fuller strain. White Lab 002. Looking at the uh, likelihood of using a yeast over time, um, this is Fuller's, which is the one that I chose, uh, is increasing over time. It was at 25%. Now it's probably somewhere in the 50% range based upon recent data. Um, and the third one, which is the, I think it was uh, Worthington, uh, that's decreasing to nothing. It's used only very early on in the late 90s. And it's just not used at all today. So um, you can use it. You can try it out. But uh, nobody's winning with it. So um, stick to either Fuller's or Guinness. Water chemistry. Didn't have a lot of data on water chemistry. But I will report it. Uh, between six, 65 and 110 calcium. Average of 86. Uh, between 0 and 15. Magnesium. 30 and um, 50 for sodium, um, 30 and 120 for sulfate, and between 55 and 165 for chloride. Um, I plan to be in the 40s for my calcium. I don't worry about calcium. I'll get it from my grist. Uh, just under the mean on magnesium and sodium. I'm right at the means for the sulfates and chloride. These are the most important to me for, this, for any style of beer, um, unless these are really high. Um, I try to focus on this ratio and getting these right. Fermentation temperature, not a big delta between the average for all strains and the two most prominent. Right there at 66 degrees Fahrenheit was the average. The Worthington was a little bit less than that, 65, uh, but not a big change there. I plan to ferment uh, at 66 or 18.9 Celsius. Other variables, uh, carbonation volumes were 2.3 volumes of CO2 and the mash pH was 5.31. Now, on to the recipe. Uh, I'm going to start with 65% Maris Otter um, and 13% flaked oats. Um, for my roasted malts, I'm going, to, I'm going to group these together. Roasted malts, I'm going to use chocolate malt. And I'm choosing lower colored malts just because I'm on the high end of the color range here. 4.7% uh, of crisp chocolate. I really like crisp malts uh, and Bryce. Roasted barley, the 300 Lava Bond roasted barley from Bryce, 4.5%. And then down here at 1.9, um, the black malt. Try to choose a lighter colored black malt. These can get up to the 5 and 600 range. Um, and I'm here picking the lowest, lowest one I can find. My crystal malts, 3.5% crystal 60 and 3.3% uh, crystal 90. I'm picking English crystals here. Um, and then 4% of that toasted malt, the uh, biscuit malt. I plan to add about 25 IBUs at 60 minutes of EKG and then about 0.15 ounces per gallon or 1.12 grams per liter EKG at 15 minutes. I'm not going to put that aroma addition in. Um, 
And I'm going to put in 285 billion cells of white lab 002. This is for a five gallon batch, five and a half gallon batch. Uh, I'm going to shoot a uh, for original gravity of 1.062, following that trend upward and 33 IBUs. Here's my water chemistry, we just went over that, um, and a mash pH of 5.36. Um, infusion mash at 154 for 60 minutes, and I'm going to sparge it as usual, however you start, sparge, batch, no sparge, or fly sparge. And I'm going to boil for 75 minutes, that was the, the average there. Chill to 64 Fahrenheit or 17 Celsius and pitch 285 billion cells for a 5 gallon batch of White Lab 002. I'm going to ferment at 66 or 18 Celsius and at 5 points from their final gravity, raise it to Celsius, uh, 70 Fahrenheit or 21 Celsius and hold for 2 to 3 days. Transfer to a bottle or keg and carbonate to 2.3 volumes of CO2. Well, that's it. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Mean Brews. Um, next episode is going to be, I'm just going to go ahead and pick one. I'm going to do American IPA. I think it's time we, we picked one that's real popular. So focusing on West Coast or any recipe that's one in category 21A. Uh, also, I'm, I'm working on a collaboration with another YouTube channel. I'm not going to give any details there, but uh, be on the lookout for that. It'll be a little bit different. It'll be along the same mold of what we do here on our original series um but kind of grouping together a few other styles um so you can maybe stock up with some grains and ingredients and and be able to brew a bunch of different styles on some bulk orders of uh ingredients thanks for tuning in and uh until next time uh happy brewing bye, -bye.